Good morning students. Today we come to the topic on graph transformation. I'll be touching the concept of horizontal and vertical transformation. Now let's say you are given the graph of f of x. Now you are asked to sketch this graph, all right, af into bx plus c plus d. Now, we are supposed to transform the graph f of x into this graph. There is two major transformation over here. Now, if you look at a and d, they call this the vertical transformation. Now, and B and C, they would like to call it the horizontal transformation. Horizontal transformation. But for me, I would like to call this the Y transformation, all right? And the horizontal transformation, I would like to call it the X transformation. Let us first begin by looking at the vertical transformation, then the transform that means the transformation in Y. Now let's look at we are trying to trans what does A this A do to the graph f of x? Let us do an example first. Let's say this is the graph of f of x. You are supposed to transfer uh, transform to 2 f of x. Now, this is like a function, all right? You put x into your f of x, your f, sorry, your f, and then you get f of x, okay? And then you times 2 to it, and you get 2 f of x. Now, so this is your f of x graph. So the output you multiply by 2. So let's look at this point first. This point is d1 above the axis, all right? It's a distance of d1. So you multiply it by 2, all right? For this specific value of x, you get this d1. So you multiply by 2. So d will be? 2d1 over here, all right, 2d1. Now, how about these two points? f of x is equal to 0, so you multiply by 2. So it will still remain as 0. How about these two? Now, this is below the x-axis, this distance is d2. So you multiply by 2, it will be 2d2. Alright, for that value of x, so you'll be somewhere here, and the other one is somewhere here. So your graph will be something like this. Okay? Now, so what can we say? Look at this transformation. What can we say about this transformation? The graph is being stretched by a scale factor of 2. Stretch, you, you can stretch this way or this way. Now this is being stretched this way. All right. Points on the x-axis remains unchanged. Why points on the x-axis remains unchanged? Because point on the x-axis, your fx is 0. So you multiply by 2. You will still remain as 0. All right. So this is uh, what does a what a does is is a uh, stretch para to the y axis by a scale factor of a. Now, if a is 
greater than one so it's a stretch now if a is smaller than one you'll find that it is being compressed all right so imagine it's half so imagine instead of two this will be half how about minus a all right how about minus a okay now minus a let's say it's minus half all right let's look at half first it is being compressed all right then after that you multiply by minus one so the graph is reflected about the x-axis let's move on to d now you have this graph y is equals to f of x this is your f of x graph now you're supposed to do this transformation so for every input you put in all right uh, let me just draw the diagram for you now x you put into f you get f of x and then you plus d to it so you got f of x plus d so every output here is being sh shifted up if take for example if d is positive okay how will this graph looks like now this point will move up by d so this distance is d how about this point this one also d this one is also d all right so are these two points also being moved up so you find that your graph will look something like this all right so it's being shifted up by d so d will translate the graph by d units in the y direction now if d is greater than zero that means the graph is being pushed upwards if d is smaller than zero it is being pushed downwards Now let's look at this graph f of x you are supposed to transform to a f of x plus d the question is which transformation do you do first now let's let's draw this diagram again all right what does this mean is x you put into f you get your f of x all right then after that you multiply by a you get a f of x all right then you plus d to it so you got a f of x plus d so what does that mean all right so by looking at this diagram you actually do a first followed by d all right so you do a first a follow by d okay now this one is just like your broad mass you know your broad mass rule you study in primary school now you do the multiplication first before you do the addition or subtraction now so for vertical transformation all right if it's a compound transformation like this you always do the multiplication first before you do the addition or the subtraction okay now let's move on to horizontal transformation
Now we have come to horizontal transformation. Now horizontal transformation is given by this letter B and C. So let's look at one of uh, each of them separately. Let's look at B first. All right, you're asked to transform from the graph f of x to f b of x. Now let's say this is the graph uh, f of x. All right. Let's assume that b is 2. We show you by an example. I think it's easier to see it that way. So you're asked to transform f of x to f 2 of x. Now, when x takes the value of x1, okay, now this is your value of fx1, fx of 1. Now, look at this graph. What value must you put in to get fx1? You only need to put in half of x1 because you are multi multiplying by 2. So let's say this is x1 over 2. So it takes this point. Now how about this? This is x2. Alright. Previously, you need to put x2 to get this value. This is fx2. Now you need to take half of it because you're multi it, multiplying it by 2. All right? So this, this point will, will move uh, this distance away from the uh, y-axis will be reduced all right? by a scale factor of half. Multiply by a scale factor of half. So this is, say, your x2 over 2. Right, so this is your now you put half of x2 you will get this the same value as before now same as x3 all right previously you put x3 now you only need to put half of x3 so let's say this one is x3 over 2 so this is your point so how will your graph looks like Right. Maybe this one should, should shift a bit lower. Okay, this. Uh, now, so you can see that the graph is being compressed all right, by a scale factor of B or, uh, or stretches in the Y direction by a scale factor of 1 over B. All right. So let me write this. So B, what does B do? Stretches. f of x para to the x-axis by a scale factor of 1 over b. Alright. Now, so when you see scratches by stretches by a scale factor of 1 over b. Imagine b is greater than 1, all right? So actually it's compressed, understand? Compressed, okay? But if b, if this is, let's say b is uh, less than 1 but greater than 0, what will happen? All right, let's say if it's a quarter, then you'll find that this is stretched by a scale factor of 4, okay? Now let's look at the letter C. What does C do? Now, in the same way, all right. You, if you look at it, last time you need to put x one to get this point. Now you need to get x one minus C, okay? Or in this case, uh, x one minus two. All right. Previously, you get x one. To get this value, this is fx1, and this is fx2. 
So now this graph is being uh, this this x1 in order for to you for you to get fx1 now you need to put in fx1 minus 2. Okay, so let's say f let's say this is 2, this distance is 2, 2, and then this distance is 2. So the graph and you do it for every other point. So you find that the graph is moved, all right, is translated two units to the left. All right. So now, uh, maybe I write over here. What's the transformation of C? Moves f of x to the left by c units. Now if c is negative means you are moving to the right. If c is positive means you move to the left. Now I would like to explain a bit more all right uh, of b and c now you just just look at c forget about what i have explained to you you look at it intuitively now if you transform x to x plus 3 you feel that the graph is should be shift to the right right so that's wrong it's actually shift to the left by three units if you go uh, uh, if you follow this explanation Right, so it's against your intuition. Now let's look at this one. You look at this. Now 2x, x to 2x, you feel that the, the graph is being stretched by a scale factor of 2. All right, this way, this is the x axis just being stretched. No, wrong. It's being compressed by a scale factor of 2 instead of stretch. So again, this is against your intuition. You find that for horizontal transformation is against your intuition. Right? This is one way to, a quick way to do. Now let's look at this compound transformation fx to f dx plus c. Which transformation to do first? Now let's, let, let me call y equals to let, let me call this y okay now last time you put x into f of x you get y okay now you put x you put into f you get f of x which is your y Okay, the question is, now, what do you need to put into f b x plus c? All right, for you to get f of x. And this is why. So this is the question, all right? What do you need to put into this so that you get the same y as this? Now to look into that, it's very simple. Now. Assuming that this, this is x1, alright? This is x1. Previously, you put x1, okay? Now, now what do you need to put inside? So, so you, you equate x1 to bx plus c. Then, to, you make x the subject of the formula, your x1 minus c divided by b equals to x. Alright, 
So what do you do first? You do your C first, followed by B. Alright, you minus C, followed by B. Okay? So in the same way, you have to do your C, followed by your B. Okay? Now, again you look at this. Intuitively, alright, when I was a student, I look at it. I feel like doing the B first, instead of doing the C. So again, but the correct way is to do the C first. So this is again against your intuition. All right. So as a student, that's how I uh, remember. Now another way to look at it, uh, which how to or rather to help you to remember which one to do first. Now let's look at this uh, transformation again. You're asked to transform f of x into f of b x plus c now as a student i always tell myself i make sure for x i make sure it's a change in x what do i mean by that now x i will change it to x plus c and then followed by x i change to b x plus c so it's always a change in x now what happened if we look at it the other way now so this is correct now if you look at it if you x you change to bx all right so this is correct still at this moment is still correct now if you do it now if you change x and then you plus c to it this is wrong because it's not a change in x all right so it should be x change to bx and then you change to your x now change to x plus c over b so you see it's always a change in x all right maybe i just give you another example Mm, I don't have much space. Never mind. Maybe I can just write over here. So let's say you are trans asked to transform f of x to change to f maybe minus mod x. Now I will touch on how to do the transformation of modulus. But now we are talking about the process. All right now some students will do it this way x i change to mod x and then i followed by minus mod x this is wrong All right if you do this transformation you will get a different answer because this is not a change in x this is a change from here to here is a change in mod x now the correct way to do is, so this is wrong, x change to minus x, then follow by minus mod of x. So this is correct because it's always a change in x. x to minus x is changed to, is a change in x. Then here I mod the x, alright, so it's a change in x, okay. I hope I have made myself clear.